So, what we're gonna do today? Very, very good question. The entire assembly of the rocker is used with 5mm bits, Allen keys or hex drives, and they should all be tightened to 12 newton meters. I'm just going to loosen these all off. Now these main ones here are bolted straight into the frame, so there's a threaded section inside the frame that these connect to. I'm going to take this out, so we'll see this complete bolt. Um, the bearing itself runs on the shaft and then this is the cap. We're going to get this apart cleaned in grease, so I'll put this to the side the now. We're now going to get the 5mm bit onto the rear section while we're on this side. And this side is actually just a regular bolt, dome head, flat back, and there is a washer contained at the back as well. I'm going to put this in for a second because I'm going to show you something from another angle. The reason I've uh, put the bolt back in place is we've got a similar setup if reversed. So we have, this is the, the main bolt that the bearing's running on, so it's essentially a pivot shaft. So if I put um, the bit on here and push, you can see that this comes clear. And there's the bolt and the washer from the other. And again on this side, we have the shaft pivot points, regular bolt and a washer. So remember to collect all of these components. pre loosen this one off. Now they shouldn't be very tight. There we go. Now as we remove the rocker assembly, we've got to watch out there's a top hat type shim washer, if you like. So when we're bringing it out, I tend to pivot it down so I can retrieve these first. So there's there. And there's the same on the other side. The front is the exact same. So as we wiggle forward, I'm just keeping my fingers pushed on the back of them so that they don't go pinging out. And it is a tight fit, so it is just a case of walking them out, pushing on one side and the other. There we go there. This is all your components away from the bike, so an exploded diagram if you like. Now these top cap washers, they are interchangeable. All four of those are identical, so don't worry if you've dropped one, they will swap about, there's no problem. As long as you've got four, when you go to put it back in, everything's cool. Um, we've got our bolts that bolt in the way towards the frame. Top caps go on the inside to keep it from loading up too much. And we have the same thing, pivot shafts here going outboard towards the top caps, which are on the outboard side, and then the little bolts as well, which mount to the rear triangle. So we're now just going to go about cleaning all of the components. I'm using alcohol-based wipe. Use whatever you prefer, just as long as it's a degreasant. You could use white spirits. <laughs> We've now got the rocker linkage here with the bearing still in place. From here, we can make a little assessment to see if our bearings are okay or not. So what you can do is you can pinch with your finger the inside of the race, the silver part, and then rotate around and you want to feel it as smooth. It shouldn't be notchy, it shouldn't be grindy, it shouldn't make any noises. So go around with every single one of them, moving slowly, 
There will be a little bit of resistance um, with the grease in there, but it shouldn't be major. You shouldn't really have to struggle to turn up. The main ones, these big ones here, these are the ones that can get notchy and uh, need a service. What if we find that one of these bearings is actually grinding away? Now, in my case, mines are fine. But say you, you get a hold of one of them in particular, say, and you can feel it's you know quite notchy, got a little bit of noise to it. Maybe it's not the end of the world. What we can do is uh, the usual trick. So these are sealed bearings on both sides. We don't need to take the um, the bearing out of the housing for this one. So we're just wanting to get one side, pop up the seal, and we can get a little look on the inside. So with the seal popped off, we can have a, an examination of the inside. Um, the, again, this one's an all right one, so there's nothing really to show you here. Got a hold of one of the bolts there. You can see that the assembly is turning. It is nice and free. With the seal open and exposed here, now we're not going to be able to get to the other side of this. It's only the one side that we can pop off while the bearing's still in place. Um, a little spray of degreasant. And then we can work the bearing around, allowing it a chance for that degreasant to really get soaked in. And then tipping it up on its side. We need to allow the degreasant to evaporate off. So now that we're all dry, we're gonna get hold of our grease and we're just gonna pack it in into the races. Now these are load bearing bearings. They are not for speed. So you are perfectly fine to pack these completely. As you put it in, the grease work the bearing around a little bit as well and then keep packing in until all of the air gaps have disappeared. There's the weather seal there and it can just be pushed on with your finger and pushed in with your nail. I'm now going to wipe down the excess because we don't want any grease kicking about on the outside so we're going to give it a good wipe down on the exterior because once it's on the bike it's a bit more difficult to clean the grease out. What you're not to worry about if you like is grease on the inside of the bearing because that's going to be greasing up the pivot points anyways. If you decide that after a quick assessment of the bearings you need to replace them, so say they're too noisy, got a wee bit of play in them, all that sort of thing, these are load bearings so you're going to notice any creaking or grinding evidently as soon as the suspension begins to move. So what I would suggest is ordering up your bearings first, make sure they're there before you press these old ones out. Obviously you can use the bike up until the point that you press the bearings out but you can't push them back in and um, it tends to damage them and they don't work well once they've been pressed back out again so get the new ones check them and offer them up against the existing bearings first before you press them out because manufacturers will make mistakes or suppliers will make mistakes and they'll maybe package up a bearing that looks like it's the correct one um, until you offer it up against your particular model so I'm going to throw up a PDF file, if you like, off the torque diagrams, but it also gives you all the part numbers and the bearing numbers that you need. We're making up a DIY press for getting the bearings into place and getting them back out again. What the best thing to do is if you get the new bearing and get the socket that you're wishing to push into, make sure that the bearing is going to drop in there. It's not going to catch on the sides. So for the smaller bearing, this is going to work. Just for reference, this is a 19 millimeter socket set. Um, but you'll notice that the bigger one is going to need a bigger socket. So this would be no good for using to push the old bearing out because it's just going to start pressing against it. Whereas this one, the bearing's able to just drop in nicely. Now I'm going to show you this because I'm not going to be pushing these ones out. These ones are still good. You've got two surfaces to look at. So this is the surface that the bearing is going to be pushed up against. So it's going to get pushed up against this side. So the bearings open on the inside and it's got the surface is buttoned up to on the outside. So we need to remove this one. 
we need to have a bolt that's going to fit in here and it's going to press against the inside you don't want it pressing against the outside because you're trying to drift this bearing out of place so we'd have our bolt go through here on the inside you want the socket that fits nicely and then you want a nut that's going to go on top of that as well we get a ratchet and we just start twisting and pulling through the bear now it will take a wee bit of force to get it going but you can see this big washer here is getting pulled in tighter and tighter into the frame and once we get to there that's as far as I can go and we should see The bearing has uh, pulled itself out so far, so it's nearly all the way there. So you can just strike or tap on the back, and that should work its way loose, like so. Um, if it's taking heavy hammering, I would uh, go back to pressing so that it's as far out as it can get. So before we push the new bearings in, we need to clean up the surfaces where the bearings have been. We've got the exact same sort of rig, but this time we're trying to push it in instead of pulling it out. So this setup that I've got here is the same washer that I was using, or the same nut, but I've flipped it over so that it is flush with the back. So that's flush there. We've got a shorter bolt because I don't need a longer bolt. And I have this washer, which is the exact diameter off the bearing so the trick is is this outer race the outer side of the metal that's what you want to push against you don't want to be pushing against the center or against the rubber seal because that will break it so you want it to be exactly flush with this so when you put your assembly together it's going to start pushing directly on the outer race the bearing is getting pushed in every time i rotate And we'll keep going until we know that it's driven home and you'll feel a lot more pressure once you've got it flattened out, which is there. And once we're there, we just back out. Assembly taken apart. Washer out. And you can see perfectly driven home seal. The surfaces that we're tightening on to are devoid of grease and grit that have built up from the trail. So I'm working on this first part here which is the main frame. Um, this is the rear triangle as well. We're just passing through all of the shafts for the rear triangle. We're making sure that the, the inside here, so I'm using just an allen key pushing in against the surface and working around. And we end up with a nice clean contact. Um, and again, on the inside as well, there are surfaces that need to be rubbed down. Make sure we're not introducing any grit or grime from the trail. And to give yourself a little bit of room to work, um, the pivot point's disconnected so we can actually pull the rear triangle up the weight and out the way. And that gives us a lot of access now to that section on the frame. So there's a few things what I'm going to point out as we're putting this rocker on is the top cap washers are in place on the inside and notice the orientation as well. I need to hold on to these spacer washers to make sure they're not going to fall out but you can add a little bit of grease as well which helps to keep them in place and all I'm going to do is just walk it on one side at a time so a bit of pressure on the back, a bit of pressure on the front and we're just walking it in because it is a tight fit that's how it should be and we're going to get it roughly in place with our allen key or our screwdriver or something to that effect is you can actually push it through um, and line it up with the hole behind so you've got an idea of roughly where you need to adjust it so that it's ballpark in the right place 
Again, the same with the back end. I'm just making subtle adjustments so that we've got it centered. The frame bolts, which are these nice long ones here. Now I'm um, gonna add just a little bit of grease to the shaft element itself, the part that's gonna be loading on the bearing. I'm just hand tightening these in. I'm not looking to wrench them on. As soon as I've got resistance, I'm gonna stop. I need to make sure that these top cap spacers are gonna be sitting here and on the outside there as well. So when we bring these in, the spacer should be between the rear triangle here on the inside and between the rocker. So I've added just a little bit of grease onto there and it's the same again. We're just looking to maneuver it up slowly but surely. That little bit of grease is gonna help make the position. And we're just going to get it roughly in place. Now the top hat washers should go nowhere. With both of them fitted inboard at the moment, we can now wiggle this rear triangle as we put pressure on the bolt so that we can get our alignment. So does it need to come up? Does it need to go down? Not by much, just a little bit of a wiggle. So it is just a case of giving it a wiggle and it'll eventually drop in if, as long as you've got the pressure. Now you will have a little bit of a gap between the, the top of the pivot bolt and the rocker, that's um, designed to be there. Um, there is supposed to be a good, you know, mill or two there. It's to stop the, the larger surface binding against the rocker so that the only surface you're binding against is on the inner race. And then the other one just in here. And again, hands are nice and greasy, but if they're all clean nicely, they should go in a little bit. And now we're going to get our torque wrench out and set it up properly. These bolts, these ones, these ones, and on both sides, are set for 12 Newton meters. I'll put that up on the screen, but there is a diagram. And now with these ones, at the back there is two halves to them. So this one is obviously mounting into the frame so there's nothing else that can spin. But as you tighten this bolt, you might find that with all the grease and stuff, the back end of this bolt starts to rotate, which is the actual bearing side, the shaft side. So what you wanna do is maybe put your finger on the back and you can feel if it is moving as you're tightening. I always torque wrench from the bolt side into the shaft rather than the other way around. That way, if I round off this head, it's just a regular bolt. There's nothing special about it. So you can get that from any hardware store. Whereas the inside, the pivot load bear inside is specific for the boss nut and for the frame. Thank you. 